Hello everybody and welcome to this last tutorial of the course. Today I will show you how you can upload a reverse shell onto a web server. However, there are multiple problems here. First of all, uh, the filtering the filtering of extensions. So for example, I have on my desktop, it says have a nice day dot PHP and then I have something here which I've clearly mistyped to have a backslash. Excellent. So this is a reverse shell to which I have added an extension GPG, primarily because web servers, they have filters. And let's just open up our damn vulnerable app. There's this uh, neat upload section. Now somebody might say, well, we're not going to get that to a real web server or website. My answer to this, yes, you will. Why? Well, pretty much all social websites and any sort of a website that has client-to-client -client interaction and any sort of a website which has tech support or something of a kind and which has contact forms, 99% chance that there will be an upload function somewhere on the site. Just have a look around. It's there. Almost all the sites have an upload function of some sort or kind. Okay, just take a... Uh, try to imagine a dating website. How would a dating website function without an upload function to upload photos of people? Practically impossible. Also, social media websites and so on. Now, there are several things which you need to take into consideration. One of them is uh, you need to figure out which version of PHP are they running. To do that, uh, nope, don't burp suit this one excellent to do that you have an nmap scan and you have script HT, uh, equals http dash php dash version and this is going to give you a version of http and it's going to try to determine which operating system is running there as well if i'm not mistaken but more importantly it will give you a php version of the web server and then based upon the version of the php you will be able to exercise certain vulnerabilities. So my version, uh, you can find the script on the on the Nmap website. Just type just type into Google or whatever search engine you are using uh, Nmap PHP version scan, and it will bring you there. I hope that you know how to do that by now. If you want to check which PHP version you are using, you can type in PHP. Uh, Five dash v and there you go so do, do, do. let's see php 54 so 5439 you think that 53 something like that that was uh, that was vulnerable to null byte inclusion this is what I was trying to do here previously so if you have for example php uh, backslash 00, zero dot jpeg uh, this this thing would be dropped and even though it would be recognized, this thing would be truncated, the last part anyway, but the web server would actually, the PHP would actually read in the JPEG and it would say, oh, okay, this is fine. And then you would have a PHP script somewhere on the server, which is uh, amazing. Okay, so first things first, we need to actually download our reverse shell. Go ahead and type in pen test monkey php reverse shell so let's see php reverse shell pen test monkey and there we go so you have php reverse shell 10 tar dot gz go ahead and click on it okay save file go ahead and open it up click on it extract extract well you can type in quit uh, go to your downloads folder it should be here around somewhere excellent so in the downloads folder I have PHP reverse shell one zero zero one zero what one zero actually nothing else anyway you have some files here that you can read those are licensed things and there's a change log as well but this is what you're interested in. PHP reverse shell you can copy it to a folder that is appropriate to you that is completely up to you I have copied mine onto desktop you can see it here. I've just renamed it into have a nice day. You can rename it to whatever you want as long as it's .php. And then you don't need to put this uh, null byte here. So let me just uh, rename. 
Excellent, so it's .php and I have .jpg, but let's delete .jpg for the time being and let's leave it to .php and let's see what happens here. Where is it? Oh, I have so many things open down here. Keep in mind that when you're attempting a pen test and when you're attempting to do this, what I'm doing now, you won't be able to do it on the latest version of PHP, so no way. Uh, very difficult. You're better off with an SQL injection than you are with what I am attempting to do now. This is just uh, so this, you you can conduct a scan of a few servers or a mass scan because, well, I'm not saying that you should scan the servers that you don't have permission to scan, but people have been doing mass scans of the servers and they've been figuring out which PHP versions they are running, and if they see like they've made these scripts there it's a pretty simple script it basically says if the version is lower than this number uh give me the ip address and attempt attempt to do the following believe it or not there are a lot of servers out there which are not updated obviously not facebook or obviously not google or twitter or something like that but still a large amount of sites would be vulnerable to something of a kind and I would strongly suggest that you take a look at null byte. So just null byte. That is the thing that you saw in my file name a moment ago, like back dot uh, php backslash zero zero dot p dot jpeg. That's gonna work on just a little bit older versions of PHP. So if somebody didn't do the latest updates or something of a kind, they're gonna be in a ton load of problems. Anyway, we're going to go to browse, have a nice day, .php, open, we're going to say upload, your image was not uploaded, and for some strange reason it's popping it up here, I have no idea why, doesn't matter, it says your image was not uploaded, so there is a problem, let's take a look at the source code, uh, obviously on a real site, you might, well maybe not obviously, but on a legit site you might not be able to see this, the checking mechanism, but Anyway, it doesn't matter. You you have a way of assuming this. So it says uploaded type needs to be image and JPEG and upload size needs to be lesser than this. So what shall we do when we can't actually see this? Well, go to the upload function and try uploading different file formats. Don't just try the standard ones. Try, try whatever you can. Try unorthodox one. Try the weaker ones, etc. Whatever you can, try to upload it. See what sort of error messages you get. And if you get, uh, I don't know, you're unable to upload one type of file, but you're able to upload another type of file, you'll see uh, what the filters are like and what they are doing. And if you try to upload files of certain size, you, you don't need to try to upload a hundred of them, you can just try to upload those that are equal to the size of your reverse shell or that are greater than the size of your re reverse shell. In such a case, you will be able to determine whether you will be able to upload your reverse shell or not. In case that your reverse shell is significantly bigger than the size allowed, look for another shell that's smaller. These things are pretty small anyway. So what shall we do? Uh, we shall go to Edit Preferences, go to Net uh, Advanced Network Settings, Manual Proxy Configuration. Type in 127.0.0.1, and for port 8080, press OK. Close. We're gonna start up Burp Suit. Takes a while to load, but well worth your well worth the wait. Anyway, we're going to intercept the request in Burp Suit, and then we're going to alter it a little bit. You might have noticed that I'm using the medium setting on uh, on the damn vulnerable app, primarily because you're not going to be able to do this on high setting. There is no way. If you manage to do it, feel free to post it on the net. It will be a zero-day vulnerability, and you will get the credit for it. Anyway, so it's target. Uh, click on Proxy. Options, make sure that this one is ticked, 127.0.0.1, colon, 80.80. Go back to intercept. I'll go back to the browser. Oops, not this one. 
Excellent. So now what we shall do is also rename the file as I have renamed it before. Uh, dot, what shall we name it? JPG. Anyway, even though you see some sort of a picture here, you're not going to be able to open it on the site. I'll show you. So, uh, where is it? Okay, so browse, JPG, open, click on upload, and now go to, into Burp Suit. Here, you're going to be able to reformulate the request and to tell it pretty much whatever you want. So it says content, disposition, form, data name, uploaded, file name, have a nice day, .php .jpg. Remove the JPEG from this and then say forward. Tell me it was uploaded. Yes, it was. Excellent. Now we're going to go ahead and copy this part so we see the place where it was actually uploaded. Oops, we don't actually need the JPG. Excellent. And prior to this, what I've done, I mean, this is generally not necessary now, primarily because we are connecting back to ourselves, but take a look at this. Now, this is what I've done prior. If you're doing this on two virtual machines or something like that, you're going to need to change it. I'm doing it on one, so it doesn't really matter that much. You enter the file, you edit it with nano, and then there are... There is this part where it says change this, quite literally, and it says here change this as well. So here, if you are, you need to change the IP address to the IP address that is appropriate. I have changed it previously, but it was also local. It was also the local host's IP address. As I said, it doesn't matter to me now because I'm connecting to myself. But if you're doing this on two virtual machines, and you most likely will, and in reality you will be doing this over the internet, you will need to change this to an appropriate IP address. Also, you can change the port if you wish. I wouldn't recommend using these default ports for anything. So it's 1234. Change it to whatever you want. You can put 888 or whatever. Anyway, control X since that is already changed. Uh, next up, we need to use a bit of knowledge that we've harvested in the previous tutorial, so netcat. And cat, give me verbosity level, give, increase verbosity level, give me uh, the mode, go into listening mode, and give me the port on which you're going to listen. It's going to be one, two, three, four. Press, oops, press enter, and now it is listening on port one, two, three, four. Now uh, let's give it K for, ah, there's no need. Let's just leave it as it is. You see, I change my mind quite often. Anyway, now that we have this path, you can type it in here. Oops. See, it's spinning. And where is the terminal? I oh, know that's burp suit, that's PowerShell. Okay, so it should be listening. and. Burp suit, of course, it's not forwarding. That was the problem. So forward, excellent. There we go. Now we have a connection to the web server and can't access TTY job control turned off. Okay, so no problems. Give me ls. You see, I have access. So let's go to root. Oops, tab does not work. Root, and it stands to reason that doesn't work. Desktop, press enter, ls. There we go. We have successfully made a full circle and now we are in have a nice day at PHP JPEG. From this point on, you can do whatever you want to the machine. This was an example of reverse shell on Linux. Linux systems and operating systems are not invulnerable in spite of what the internet has been saying. They are also full of vulnerabilities. Uh, but they get patched really fast, though, primarily because it's open source, community works nonstop on it, and uh, vulnerabilities are discovered in a w really fast and patched really fast as well. So it's a very secure system in that sense. Microsoft is a bit slower, if I'm not mistaken, in terms of patching these things. 
probably because it costs money and for Linux it's practically free. Thanks to thousands of volunteers worldwide who do it. But anyway, keep in mind that Linux is not beyond, it is not like imbreakable, impregnable, uh, it's not invulnerable. It's an operating system like any other. Uh, it has flaws. You cannot prove that it's impossible to break into it. You can only prove that it is possible to break into it. In any case, I would like to say goodbye to everybody for the t in in the sense of tutorials. But I will. I'm always around in the discussion section. So feel free to ask as many questions as you would like to. And I do encourage you to explore new things, and you feel free to ask me about them if you have done some pen, if you want, if you are doing some pen testing that is perhaps not related or not included in this tutorial, even though I've included pretty much whatever I uh, could think of. Feel free to post such questions as well. They do not necessarily need to be related directly to what I am doing here, although I do not vouch for those answers. But I will give my best to help you out there. If you ask about something within the tutorial, I'll be able to help you there 100%. Anyway, until until the next course or something of a kind, I bid you all farewell and I thank you for watching.